Hi guys, Nick here from Intuitive Tennis. In today's video, we're gonna cover the classic forehand. Before I break down the classic forehand piece by piece, I want you to first take a look at some of the great champions uh, from the past. Players such as Rod Laver, Martina Navratilova, Chris Severt, uh, John McEnroe, uh, Jimmy Connors, and Ivan Lendl. Uh, take a look at how these great champions used to hit the forehand. Well, let's start off uh, with the grip. So the grip on the classic forehand is mostly going to be a continental grip. Uh, players back in the day didn't really change the grip from the forehand to the backhand. In addition to that, uh, players back in those days were predominantly uh, serve and volleyers. And so the grip is pretty much uh, the same uh, for the forehand and the backhand. Uh, Ivan Lendl uh, was one of the first players to have more of a eastern grip on the forehand. And after him, the grip uh, obviously kept shifting more and more uh, towards the semi-western and the western side. The arm structure on a classic forehand uh, was mostly a straight arm structure and this is related to the grip. So if I'm in a continental grip and if I have a bent arm uh, it's not going to work because what happens is uh, with a classic forehand uh, in a continental grip we cannot hit the ball too far in front. If you look at it from this angle, uh, the further in front I go in a continental grip, the more difficult it becomes to close the racket. You see the racket naturally uh, wants to open up the further in front I go. Uh, so the contact is going to have to be uh, further behind, almost next to the body, like this. And if I now had a bent arm on this, it was, on this shot, it would put me even uh, further behind. So this would be an impossible uh, a shot. The bent arm forehand uh, with a continental grip uh, simply does not work. Uh, so the arm structure on uh, almost all classic forehands uh, back in the day uh, was a straight arm structure. The take back is somewhat related uh, to the grip and the arm structure on the classic forehand. And so what happens is because we have a, a straight arm and a contact that's going to be further uh, behind, uh, we're not going to have a loop in the swing. Uh, we're going to just maintain the straight arm uh, from beginning to end. And so the player is in a ready position like this, and then uh, he will take it back uh, straight uh, like this. This is what the players used to do. Uh, Jimmy Connors, John McEnroe, uh, Chris Severt, and Martina Navratilova. Uh, there was no looping action like this because, look, if I loop, uh, my arm naturally wants to go in a bend. I'm not going to loop the racket with a straight arm like this. Uh, so the players back in the day simply, in a continental grip, uh, would just take the racket straight back, uh, something like this. And we already covered the contact. It's very much related uh, to the way uh, the players used to hold the racket in the continental grip. But I want to just give you one more uh, comparison uh, between uh, the way the contact is on a modern forehand and the way the contact was on a classic forehand. Uh, so one big misconception when it comes to the classic forehand is that the contact uh, was in a sideways position like this. So if you imagine me playing this way, if the net was in front of me this way, um, one misconception is that the players uh, used to stay uh, sideways on the shot. Uh, this is not true. You saw the slow motion footage of all the great players, Rod Laver, etc. Even Rod Laver uh, would hit uh, the majority of his forehands open stance and at contact uh, the chest uh, would be facing towards the net. Uh, so the best players back in the day, even though they had a classic forehand, they would still uh, make contact with their chest parallel to the net and they were not sideways. Uh, what is most commonly believed.
On the modern forehand, the contact is even more in front, where the on right hand is the right shoulder will be in front of the left shoulder. Uh, this was not possible back in the day. Uh, with a continental grip, uh, we wouldn't be able to achieve a contact this far in front because, like I said, you would not be able to close the racket uh, face properly uh, because of the continental grip. Uh, so the contact was uh, somewhere around here, next to the body, uh, but the chest uh, was facing towards the net. It wasn't as far in front as the players today, but it was a, still a contact uh, that was in front of the body. The finish on the classic forehand was much shorter uh, than the finishes on a modern forehand, uh, the way the players hit it today. Uh, the finish would rarely go uh, past the point of the shoulder. Usually the players would finish uh, somewhere around here. They would abruptly stop the stroke. Uh, so it was overall a shorter swing path. Uh, the players didn't uh, go all the way around like this, like the players do today. Uh, they would abruptly stop the stroke uh, somewhere around here. And what this also means is that the stroke, because of this shorter finish, also had less rotation. There was a rotation in the beginning phase of the, of the uh, classic forehand, uh, but there was a lot less rotation in the end stage. And therefore, uh, the classic forehand had a lot less power uh, compared to the modern forehand. The classic forehand uh, does not have as much rotation as the modern forehand. However, it is still a circular swing and not a linear swing. Uh, we already talked about the contact. Uh, so when the contact is uh, with the chest uh, facing towards the net like this, and now uh, the upper body rotation is going to continue. Uh, not as far as it would be on a modern forehand, uh, but it is still a rotational stroke with an across the body uh, type of swing path. So if you, let's look at it again. It's a straight take back like that with a shoulder turn. And now uh, the racket comes around and the contact is somewhere around here. And then the, the hand and the body continues to rotate uh, to this side. So it is not as much of a rotational swing as it is today, but it's still a rotational swing. In addition to the classic forehand being a rotational shot, it was also a shot that was performed mostly in an open stance position. Even the great Rod Laver, who played in the 60s, would hit the majority of his forehands in an open stance position. And not as often as the players do it nowadays, where the open stance forehand is probably hit 90% of the time. Uh, but still, even back in those days in the wooden racket era, uh, the open stance forehand was very predominant. And the open stance forehand uh, depends mostly on the penetration of the incoming ball. If you're interested, uh, I can post a link to my open stance versus closed stance video uh, where I discuss the open stance and the closed stance forehand in detail. If you are a recreational player and have a classic forehand, should you switch to a modern forehand? Well, this is going to depend on the individual. And let's just take uh, John McEnroe for example. Should John McEnroe uh, switch his forehand to a modern forehand? Well, absolutely not. He could possibly ruin his forehand if he all of a sudden uh, tried to do a semi-western grip or he tried to add a loop to his forehand. This is absolutely unnecessary. John McEnroe has all the fundamental elements that are required for a good forehand. It just happens to be a classic forehand uh, with a continental grip and a more straighter take back and less of a finish. However, there is a chance that your recreational forehand uh, might not look as good as John McEnroe's forehand. Uh, what happens often at the recreational level, in addition to having these classic characteristics of strokes, uh, players will have a straight take back, they will have a, a old school continental grip, uh, the players will often uh, be sideways at contact. And this is possibly the number one uh, mistake at the recreational level. So a classic forehand will not work in a sideways position. You take all these great champions, they have a contact uh, with the chest pointing towards the, towards the net. So your classic forehand needs to have the fundamental elements of a good forehand. And what are those? It's a good preparation uh, with a shoulder turn and the take back. It doesn't need a loop necessarily. Uh, it can be a straight take back and the stroke needs to have a rotation. The stroke is a rotational stroke. And so if you're used to playing the ball sideways like this, you must learn uh, to open the stroke up a little bit and rotate your shoulders and make contact somewhere around here and then try to finish as much as you can. I'm going to try to hit a few classic forehands with a continental grip, with a straighter take back, and I'm going to try to keep my arm as straight as possible, 
and then a more shorter abrupt finish and I'll try to make contact uh, with my right shoulder uh, in front so let's see how it goes a straighter take back and let me try to finish I'm still finishing too much let me finish a little bit shorter it doesn't feel too bad now the ball is very flat with this type of stroke I'm not getting a ton of top spin so let me try to create top spin See, I'm gonna have to come underneath the ball a little bit and then try to come up difficulty is keeping the racket down in the backswing which feels very uncomfortable but it doesn't really feel too bad I'm kind of getting used to it and starting to make contact further in front now let me try a few with my grip through this wooden racket it's a little bit more difficult to put topspin on it but as soon as the modern stroke comes out uh, the forehand comes back now let me try a few classic forehands again so you can see the difference there it's a completely different stroke however I'm still making contact in front and I'm rotating a little bit I think I either broke a string or I broke a racket it made a weird sound I think it's the racket that cracked I have left out the great champions Borg and Vilas out of this classic forehand lesson on purpose because these two guys are the fathers of the modern forehand so tune in two weeks from now uh, when I cover the modern forehand as for now I want to thank you for watching this video and uh, please hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time